And so, my friends, we are continuing this journey through prayer, the discipline of prayer, the spiritual discipline that the Lord calls each and every one of us to. And today we're looking at petitionary prayer. We're looking at this prayer that most of us uh, kind of revert to when we pray. Let's say that this is, in our age, the most natural uh, inclination in prayer, which is to ask for something. And I think that in some ways that's a very biblical thing. And then I think that in other ways it's a very cultural thing. Because we have been so conditioned uh, to ask and to expect getting something back and maybe especially the thing that we ask for when we petition. In this culture, we expect that if I ask for something or want something, then I am going to get it back in portion to what I've asked and also in the timeline of my expectation. And so I think that's the cultural entrapment piece when it comes to petitionary prayer is that we don't just want what we want from God, but we want it when we want it. And God is going to directly challenge us on that this morning from his word. But he is also going to encourage us to press into petitionary prayer because it's also a really good thing that we're called to do is to seek the Father For the good things. And that's what it is. It's God's children asking their father for good things. Pastor Bill Hybels says this. The most intimate communion with God comes only through prayer. And communion with God is seeking and submitting and receiving from the Lord. So it is all of the above. Seeking, submitting, and receiving, but it must always be done according to the Lord's will and in the Lord's timing. And so the word submit, again, a very countercultural word today, submit becomes key to understanding what petitionary prayer is. It's about God. It's not just about you and your requests. It's about the submission of our will to the Lord's will. It is first and foremost and always communion with God. Relationship with God. That is the life of prayer. It is the lifeblood of the Christian life and our lifeline to God. Let me say that again. Prayer is the lifeblood of the Christian life flowing through our veins, and it is our lifeline to the Almighty. Lifeblood and lifeline. And so our new life in Christ begins with prayer, and the scriptures are very clear on the nature of that initial prayer. It is simple, but it is completely utterly and eternally transformative. It is to confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and to believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead and then you will be saved. That's what the scriptures say. So for anyone who's a true believer, that's the beginning of prayer. It's the simple and transformative reality of saying, yes, Lord, I believe. I trust you. I receive you into my heart. And then the prayer of faith sustains us over the entire life of faith. That's where it's the life blood. And so I can remember um, this moment, and I shared it recently when I went to uh, Durham Christian Homes, and I was sharing the word a couple of weeks ago with a number of seniors. And I can remember so specifically in my life just so clearly the first time I prayed. And I want to share this with you and just share this little piece of my life from beginning to end, the life of prayer. 
So I came from this world that was godless. It, I did not believe in God or I was not raised with the things of the Lord as a child. And so when I was just shy of 19 years old and my friend shared the gospel with me, we ended up in his car in a greasy parking lot, a McDonald's parking lot, and that's the first time I ever prayed. And so I think that me sharing that this morning is really important because I wasn't in church. I wasn't this person. I wasn't sitting here like you doing the good things that you're doing, the wonderful, beautiful things that you're doing, coming and worshiping and praising the Lord every week, seeking after him. I wasn't doing any of that. And so God met me in a five-speed beater in a greasy parking lot in McDonald's, a greasy sinner. And my friend shared this simple little Bible track. That's what they called it. I didn't know. I was thinking track, like train or, you know, car. What track? Little Billy Graham track called Steps to Coming to Peace with God. So when I saw Evelyn this morning, she said to me the Hebrew word for peace, shalom. She greeted me with shalom this morning. So that was the Lord speaking to my heart, knowing I was sharing this this morning with everyone. Is my first prayer was steps to coming to peace with God. And it was that passage of scripture that I already shared with you. That if you profess with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, then you'll be saved. And I just prayed, come Holy Spirit. And Father, I know that you love me and your love's for me. And I just felt the wave of God's peace and love and harmony come over me. And I knew in that moment, as I do today, and all the way through the last 28 years, and God spares me as long as I'm going to go, that I'll just always know that peace that transcends understanding. And so what is petitionary prayer? It's coming to the Lord and expressing your need. Saying, Father, good Father, I, I need salvation. I need to be saved. It's the first prayer of petition. I need your spirit. And then all the way through the Christian life, it's just this simple opening up of your hands and your heart to the Lord and saying, Father, I, I need this thing. So maybe today you need the peace. Maybe you need the peace as you look back on your life and your past experience. And you need the peace to heal your broken heart. You know, your wounded self. Maybe that's what you need right now. Father, would you please give that to me? Maybe you're struggling this morning with unforgiveness. And the petition is, Lord, Lord Jesus, please help me to forgive the way that you've forgiven me. That's prayer of petition from the Lord's Prayer. Maybe you need bread, food, physical or spiritual. Lord, please give me the food that I need for today. Maybe you feel the evil of the world pressing in on you. The darkness pressing in on you. And you've asked for years and maybe decades. Why, Lord? Why do I have to go through this? Deliver me from evil. Like Jesus taught you. It's a prayer of petition. Whatever it is in your life, know that God hears you and he's listening to you and he wants you to seek him. He truly desires for you to seek him in your place of need. And he wants you to do it first and foremost in these terms in these simple and transformative terms. Thy kingdom come, and thy will be done. Lord, may it be according to your will and good pleasure. 
May it be according to your righteousness, Lord. So that is the key. That is the center. That's home base. Home base. That expression of adoration. Do you remember what I said a couple of weeks ago? That the foundational posture of prayer is adoration. Where I say, Lord, your will be done. Do you remember what we talked about with the honoring? Hallowed be your name. May your name be honored and be set aside in, as holy in my heart, Lord. Then the prayer of petition flows out of that stream, that heart place of gratitude and adoration and thanksgiving for who God is. Then we can come and we can say, Lord, I have these needs. And I know that you will answer me. And why do we know that? Well, that's our first scripture reading this morning. It comes from the Gospel of Matthew, and it's the words of Jesus. So, as we would memorize the Lord's Prayer, so I would challenge you to memorize this little part of the Sermon on the Mount. It's just one page over from the Lord's Prayer. Matthew chapter 7, verses 7 to 11. I think that a reasonable goal this morning is to memorize these verses. So I challenge you this week to do that, to meditate on the word and remember it. And I love how in the English, uh, the acronym lines up exactly with the teaching, ask. So here's what Jesus says, ask and it will be given to you. So there's the A. Seek and you will find, S, and knock and it will be open to you. Isn't that neat? How the word just does that? That's how I always remember that. It's by association. For everyone who asks receives, and the one who seeks finds, and to the one who knocks on the door, it will be open. So that is a promise. Correct? Right there? If you knock, so that's what we call volition. Choice. Jesus says do that. And the promise is that when you do that, creak, the door opens. <laughs> and then the Lord Jesus comes and he greases <laughs> those hinges, <laughs> right? those squeaky hinges of our lives. He wants us to knock so that he can come in and he can provide that healing, whatever it is in your life, whatever it may be. Or which of you, I love this part, which of you, if his son asks for bread, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, would give him a serpent? Or a scorpion. It's ridiculous. Right? You're not going to do that to your children. If then you who are evil. Just a little bit of a slap in the face there. Eh Lord Jesus? If you who are evil. Know how to give good gifts to your children. Which is true. How much more the ultimate truth. Will your father who is in heaven. Give good things to those who. Say it with me. Ask. Ask not, and you shall not receive. Your will has to be active in a real relationship with the Lord. And so, in your Bible, again this week, I just give you this very simple instruction. I have arrows on these pages. I have arrows in this Bible that Point me in the right direction. So draw some arrows this week for yourself. From chapter 7, verse 7, down to chapter 6, verse 33. 
6.33 says, Jesus speaking, Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. And then I have an arrow that takes me back to the Lord's Prayer. Chapter 6, verse 10. Our Father in heaven, may your name be honored, your kingdom come, and your will be done. So when you pray the last prayer that Jesus instructed, the ask, the seek, and the knock, we are supposed to do it through the teaching that he's already given to us, which is according to the kingdom and his righteousness, and with a heart of adoration. He's your loving father. And that is gloriously beautiful that picture right there for me that takes that weight off of me so we still have a burden of responsibility right we have to participate in the process but it's the lord's process amen it's the lord's process that he's inviting you into in the petitionary prayer. So the creator of the universe delights. Now I'm going to say this. He delights in your asking. But not without everything else that I just said. He delights in it. And he delights in answering your prayer. The prayer of his children who follow Jesus in asking, seeking, and knocking according to to his goodwill and pleasure. And so Jesus invites you to pray and to make your request to God, and he is pleased when you seek first his kingdom and righteousness in the prayer of petition, inside of it. Charles Spurgeon, the great Baptist preacher, said this. Again, just, I love these simple lines one-liners, asking is the rule of the kingdom. So Sir Spurgeon just summed up everything I just said over the last probably 10 minutes. Asking is the rule of the kingdom. Never forget that. God's kingdom. If you find yourself praying in accord with your kingdom, our worship leader, our brother Joel, already told us what to do. Repent. Repent quickly. That means turn away from the selfishness and get your eyes fixed back on the things of heaven and anchor yourself on earth in asking as a rule of God's kingdom. And so when you ask for yourself, it is called petition. And when you ask for someone else, it is called intercession. So there's two dimensions to this always. So there should be an equal balance here as well. So if you're asking for yourself, that's fine. That's petition. Lord, I need dot, dot, dot. If you're asking for somebody else, Lord, I'm praying on behalf of, it's intercession. So here's another really good point of advice for you this morning. Out of the word. Keep the balance here. If you find yourself saying I too much in prayer, and it's like this, then add some we's and balance it out. But if you find your yourself in this place in your life, which I hear so many people who are not, they feel like they're not deserving of God's grace. They feel like, how can God love me? I'm such a sinner. So then you're prayer life becomes this tilted imbalance on the place of, well, I'm going to pray for everybody else. I'm going to pray for, you know, peace in the world, and I'm going to pray for all of these general things. But you, man, I'm just this dirty, rotten sinner, undeserving of grace. Let God rebalance your scales, please. I exhort you this morning. You're worthy because Jesus makes you worthy. You can do this because his spirit's at work in your life. God wants you to because he loves you. So anybody here today 
who is feeling unloved by the Lord, let me tell you something that is the truest thing I will ever say is that God loves you. (laughs) He loves you. I'd love at least that one person (laughs) will speak up and say that in a room full of people, right? (laughs) I'd love it if everybody says, yes, he does, he loves me. So that tells me something, people of Zion. It seems as though the petitionary and intercession prayer is leaning a little. (laughs) Rebalance it. He loves you. (laughs) Lord, the Lord loves me. And I get up here every day and I, every week, every week I get up on this stage and I preach because I know the Lord loves me. And the second that I lose that, man, I'm never going to want to come up here again. Because I know that in me, it's not happening. But in him, all things are possible. Amen? So I want to share, and I'm just going to read this passage as well. It's, It's just encouragement and direction from Psalm 86 and James 1, 5. Those passages are going to come up behind me here. And we're just going to give a very basic outline of examples of petition, right from the word. So I want you to underline in your Bible again all these petitionary prayers. Listen to them. Psalm 86. Incline your ear, O Lord. So literally that means lean in. So we're supposed to pray when we pray. God, lean in and hear what I'm saying here. Answer me, for I am poor and needy. I need you. The heart of petition. Preserve my life, for I am godly. Save your servant who trusts in you. You are my God. Be gracious to me. Amazing prayer of petition. Be gracious to me, O Lord, for you, to you do I cry all the day. Gladden the soul of your servant. You see that petition? You feel low, you feel blue, you feel gloomy. Lord, gladden my heart. Give me the joy of the Spirit. A million times you'll have to pray this prayer. Keep doing it all the way through your life. Gladden my soul. For you, Lord, are good and forgiving. Gladden my soul because you are good and forgiving. Not because I am, but because you are. And in you, I'm going to become who you created me to be. Who who is God? He's abounding in steadfast love to all who call upon him. There it is again. Give ear, O Lord, to my prayer. Listen to the plea of my plea for grace. In the day of my trouble, I call to you, for you answer me. I think Jesus read Psalm 86 when he was writing the Sermon on the Mount and preaching the Sermon on the Mount. There is none like you among the gods, O Lord, nor are there any works like yours. All the nations you have made shall come and worship before you, O Lord, and shall glorify your name. For you do great and do wonderful things. You alone are God. And here's the last petition right here. There's two of them. Teach me your way, O Lord, that I may walk in your truth. Unite my heart to fear your name. Have you ever prayed that in your life before? Unite my heart to fear your name. Make that a prayer of yours. Unite my heart so that I can properly worship you. That's what the fear of the Lord is. To bow down, to submit to the Lord of creation, and to acknowledge that you are not God. If you do anything, anything today, unite your heart to that truth and seek his truth. Teach me your way, O Lord. 
I hear all the instructions of the world. Do this, do this, do this, do this, do this. Prayer, teach me, O Lord, above all these dim voices, above all of the good and the bad instruction of man, of humanity. Lord, teach me your truth so that I might walk in your way. That's a petitionary prayer. That's how the Lord wants us to pray. Just like that. To incline his ear to hear me, to answer me, to be gracious to me, to gladden my soul, to teach me his way, to, for me to unite my heart. And then listen to James 1.5 and the promise in this. If any of you lacks wisdom, ask God who gives generously to all without reproach and it will be given to you. James 1.5. This is one of my favorite passages, verses in the Bible. I live by this because I lack wisdom all the time. And I will stop and I encourage you to do this at any moment in your life, at any crossroads that you are at. Lord, your word says that if I ask for wisdom, You will give it, not just give it, you'll give it generously, abundantly, to anyone who asks. So I'm going to hold tight to that prayer of petition in my life, Lord. I'm going to hold tight to it. And then I've mentioned as well the other ones. I'm giving the biblical examples of prayers and petitions. Rhonda, you probably see she already has that up there, like on it, right? The other ones I've already said, the daily bread in the Lord's prayer, forgiveness of sin and deliverance from evil. And so my friends, prayer changes things. It changes your life. It makes us wise unto salvation. It transforms our minds and perspectives on reality. And it lets us see the world through God's eyes. When we humble ourselves in prayer, Jesus enables us in the prayer of petition to forgive as he is forgiven, to overcome evil with good, which humanly speaking is impossible. The, the history of humanity is abundant evidence that we have a terrible time doing this. Overcome evil with good. No, I want to drop one more bomb on them because then that'll fix it. No, it won't. It will lead to a thousand more bombs. I'm just going to speak one more word of retribution because, you know, you deserve it. You hurt me. And that's going to fix the problem. No, it will not. It will create a thousand more words of retribution. And so God comes in and he says, my child, stop doing that. You don't have to do that. Petition me, come to me, and I will show you. Lord, help me to overcome evil with good. Help me to live peaceably with all people, Lord, because I can't do this. I need your help. Lord, I'm not putting you first in my heart and then living out the life. Help me to do this, Lord. When we enter into this prayer, we then can wrestle with the trials and tribulations of life in a healthy way. Do you see that? It could become a healthy thing because you're bringing it to God. Look, Lord, there's all of this, these trials. There's all these tribulations. There's all of these challenges. There's all this hate in me. There's all this anger in me. I'm going to give it to you. I'm going to petition you. I'm going to ask you to give me what I need. And so the last thing that I want to say this morning 
This is really, really important. And I'm sure that you've been sitting here, some of you, waiting. Is he going to do it? Is he going to cross the threshold into unanswered prayer? The but. But, Pastor Brad, if only you knew about all of the unexpected things and all the unanswered prayers in my life of petition. Let me tell you about this. Let's go there. So the Hebrew word for prayer means to connect or to judge. The Hebrew word for prayer means to connect or to judge. To judge. Countercultural again. That means to discern. You must discern. And in the scriptures, it depends on the verb form. The form of the verb. To connect. Am I connecting with God? Am I communing with God? Doing, right? Doing that. Or am I judging rightly a situation in my relationship with the Lord? Am I discerning? And this is hugely important because when we engage in prayer, we should always be judging. Always be discerning. Right? Not judging in terms of condemnation. Obviously, that definition doesn't fit here. There's two definitions of judgment. Discernment and condemnation. We're not talking about the condemnation piece here. We're talking about our prayer life with the Lord and discerning what is right or wrong, good or bad. What are the intentions of my heart? It's what you have to judge in prayer before the Lord. Lord, what are the intentions of my heart? Do you pray this way? Is that your opening line when you come before the Lord with a petition? What are the intentions of my heart? Lord, am I praying for your will to be done? So, Lord Jesus, am I praying the Lord's prayer rightly? We're judging. Judging our own souls at that point in time before the Lord. Am I praying in accordance with your word? Lord, right judgment. Am I praying in alignment with your will in this matter, Lord? So before I step into the thing that I really want to ask for, I'm going to say, give me an ear for you, Lord, in this. Praying this way saves us from great harm my friends. In many cases, it is God's grace and mercy that prevents our selfish prayers from being answered. In many cases, it is God's grace and mercy that prevents our selfish prayers from being answered. So, do you have prayers in your life that you have prayed, and do I, that have not been answered? Up front, yes. And follow up, may be good. May be good. So I'm going to just speak for myself and I'm going to let you decide for yourself today. I often wonder this. How far into the weeds would I be if God answered all of my self-centered prayers? How deep into the weeds would I be? How far up my legs would the mud be? if God were to have answered all of my silly, selfish prayers? And for me, the answer is lots. A lot of mud. A lot of mud, man. Right? Lord, make me wealthy. That could be one of the worst prayers that you could pray in your life. Ever. Right? And it could, and it's our culture, like, <laughs> some people are like, yeah, okay, I get that one. Your culture says... Get lots of money and you're going to be happy. Get lots of stuff and then you're going to be content. N wrong. Opposite most of the time. Can wealth be a blessing from God? Yes, it can. Can it be a curse from the devil? Yes, it can. Discern rightly. Judge rightly. That's all I'm saying this morning. So in this respect, so-called unanswered prayers for me 
have been a good thing that have protected me from heartache. Now, I may think, well, Lord, why are you not giving me what I asked for? But he might be saying, to protect you, son. To guard you, son. I just submit it to you this morning. Which reminds us, again, that the goal of petitionary prayer is to connect us with the Father and ask good things, not to get what we want and impose arbitrary timelines on the Holy Spirit. And oftentimes, our prayers are limiting things with attached timelines on God. The desires of our hearts can only truly align with God's purposes when we unite with Jesus' prayer, with the prayer of Jesus, and then submit the requests. So there's a double meaning to submit. Yes, make the petition, but submit to meaning they're yours now, Lord, to do what you please. That's the true prayer of petition. It's yours to do what you please. And my life is yours to do what you please. Is that the prayer of our heart? When we lay it all down before the throne of grace and are given instruction as to what ought to be picked up. When we acknowledge, Lord, you know best, I don't. Amen? Soft. That was a soft amen. (laughs) But don't say it if you don't mean it. I'm truly and honestly, I'm not messing around this morning here. Obviously, you can see that, right? Like, don't amen that if you don't mean it. Bring that one to the Lord this week. Come. Come and pray with other people about this. Lord, you know best. We see dimly and partially our human perspective. Mine is biased, opinionated, and misdirected by sin. Lord, I submit it to you. That truth. Unite my heart with yours in prayer. Do we submit the truth to God every time? Do we humble ourselves first and then ask and receive? Are we willing to seek God's glory and yield to his will as we submit the request? Yield to his will as we submit the request. I strongly believe in answered prayer. I really do. You may be wondering if I do at this point in time. I do. I do. I've seen many miracles. I've asked for many things that are beyond human ability or comprehension. I believe in that. I do. And I know Jesus loves me and cares for me. And that he loves you and he cares for you. But I do not know. If you remember anything that I say today, remember this part right here. I do not know. When or how my heartfelt prayers are going to be answered that align with God's heart. I don't know. It must be submitted first. I'm yielding to you, Lord, my when and my how and my how long, O Lord. And I'm just going to go to the Psalms and keep praying with David a hundred times. How long, O Lord? Be free. As many times as you need, bring it to him. He'll listen through your life. For 28 years, I've been praying for something. 28 years since I became a Christian. I've been praying for the salvation of many people in my family. Because I have many people in my family who don't know the Lord. And it's not that they haven't heard the message or any of that kind of stuff. 
They know the message. In fact, I've been told by some very close family members, I don't want to hear the gospel anymore. Right? Don't tell me anymore. And I'm telling, like, there's not many more painful words that you can hear than that. But what God's taught me is, am I willing to yield that? Submit that to him? And I have. I've been really faithful with this over the decades. Because it's not a matter of people not understanding or having heard. It's a matter of God's timing that I don't know. Clearly, I don't know. This is not aligned with my agenda. And so the Lord has challenged me at a deep core place with my friends and my family. Is God faithful? It's a dangerous question. Is God faithful? Or is he unfaithful? So I know he's not unfaithful. I know he's not. The question for me becomes, will I remain faithful and keep pressing in in that area of prayer? That's the question. Will I remain faithful in that painful area where I'm not getting the answers I want in the timeline that I expect got to submit that god reveals the hows and the what's over time and god can stretch you as much as he wants and he promises you he promises you in his word that it's not going to break the band is not going to break will we wait and trust the lord over a lifetime of stretching because maybe I'm letting go of that band on purpose maybe the timeline is eternity my last thought for you today maybe it's eternity have you ever thought about that petitionary prayer for healing of any kind any kind only ever comes in temporary ways in this life they they are partially answered prayers whether it's your mental health whether it's your depression whether it's your anxiety whether it's your physical ailments whatever it is it's only ever going to come temporarily Because complete healing in the form of the resurrected body comes in eternity. Let that truth define your petition of prayer. Let that guide it. Because that's where faith comes in. God calls us to trust his promise of new creation. Eternity. In my experience, answers to prayer often unfold across long time frames and in ways I do not expect or even want. Many times in my life, I don't want this like this, Lord. I know you can relate with me. Be encouraged this morning. God created space and time and is not bound to our timelines. He's not bounded by it. He works out his purposes and answers prayer. Yes, he answers prayer in the heavenly dimension. Multidimensional. Physics is saying there could be lots more dimensions. We don't know. God works it in his dimension, and in that he sees all from a multidimensional perspective and answers with limitless capacity, which is why the word of God specifically instructs us to pray at all times because the God who created time sees and on every occasion in the power of the Holy Spirit, Ephesians 6, 18, Pray at all times, on every occasion, in the power of the Spirit. 
It's eternal. That's what that verse is saying. And the second that that sucker goes up, that prayer, poof, eternity. God has it. He can do whatever he wants with it. He is. The life of petitionary prayer is carried out in the limitless capacity of the Holy Spirit, unbounded by time or space, whoever and always draws us into communion with Christ and the Father. That is prayer. So let's pray.